a crowded beach in, of all places, Mogadishu. A sign, perhaps, that Somalia is finally on the mend, or another false dawn. A suicide attack in the city by Al-Shabaab. The militants remain a big threat here. And yet the government insists it is turning the tide. To back up that claim, we're escorted to a secret location to meet one of Al-Shabaab's most senior commanders. Zakaria was the head of military intelligence for the terrorist group. America put a $3 million price on his head. But now he's a defector, sickened, he claims, by the group's shift towards attacking civilian targets. And now it turns to terror actors. So you were against the terrorists? Yes, we, we were against that all. Somalia's government is treating him well, hoping he can encourage others to follow his path. I ask Zakaria for his reaction to Al-Shabaab's massacre of 148 students last month in Garissa, Kenya. Mm, I'm really shocked. Not really shocked? Yes. I'm really you knew shocked. the organization. You must have known this was likely. Yes, this is what uh, they no, do. No, this is not the right things. What would you say to the parents of those students who died in Garissa? I'm really I'm very sorry. And I'm sending my condolences to them, to, and to their families and parents. Al-Shabaab remains a powerful, dangerous force here in Somalia, but it's losing territory fast and it's under huge military pressure. The Somali government believes now is the moment to use the carrot as well as the stick to try and lure in more top-level defectors. There was no defection uh, two years back or one year back even. Why we have today uh, some high-level uh, value targets are defecting is the reason because of the pressure on the ground, the pressure on the air, in the air. It's not just Al-Shabaab's leaders being targeted. We head inland. The militants once controlled all this, now the balance is shifting. A government camp for fighters who surrendered, including one woman who was kidnapped by Al-Shabaab as a schoolgirl. They beat you, they starved you, and they raped you because you were refusing to join them, is that right? Mm. Yes, she says. I spent three years with Al-Shabaab. I bore them three children. I was taken into battle with them. I escaped when I was wounded in an ambush. She's safe here now, but not outside. Al-Shabaab may not control much territory, but it still has the power to push this fragile nation off course. Andrew Harding, BBC News, Somalia.